It's important to understand George MacDonald was born in Scotland and um, certainly from the 16th century forward that tradition of Scottish Calvinism through Knox and those who followed in Knox uh, was very committed to the Calvinist tradition of the Institutes and uh, applying that. Now within Calvin's Calvinist theology you get the notion of God's sovereignty, obviously human fallenness, election, double election, um, you get the angry God, you get the Christ who is sacrificed to appease the angry God, and um, people, are, and then you get people elected to salvation and others to damnation. So when you get someone like George, uh, George MacDonald uh, reacting to Edwards, uh, much of Edwards' theology, Edwards' theology is really just an echoing in North America of Scottish Calvinism that MacDonald grew up with. And so, uh, MacDonald begins as a minister, so there's pastoral implications for MacDonald. He sees where this, this particular theology um, hits the road when it comes to, am I chosen, am I not chosen? If I'm not chosen, what's the implication? How do I know if I'm, I, I'm the chosen, the elect? Uh, and if sovereign God does what God wants, what's the purpose of human will anyway? I'm just a pawn that's being played in the chessboard of time. Um, where is the loving God in, in all of this? So uh, George MacDonald grows up in a, a Scottish Calvinist background, not even a moderate Scottish Calvinist, uh, in which you can see the idea of Edwards and many uh, North American um, Calvinists played out. And it's out of that, and particularly um, the in the trenches pastoral side, in which he sees where this leads in terms of people's souls and people's longings, the implications of these ideas of um, if God is love, why would God select some for damnation and others not, even if God knows choices? Uh, and so you get MacDonald is on this conscious search for something um, greater and grander than Calvinism or even Lutheranism um, in that sense. In the 1850s, the well-known Anglican divine F.D. Morris gave a series of lectures in which he was arguing um, the understanding of eternal life was not something that was the end of this life. The notion that people who didn't accept Christ in this life would be banished to eternal torment. Morris questioned all of that. In that sense, it was Morris lectures in the 1850s that set MacDonald free to start thinking outside the Calvinist box. And there's this very close connection then between the two. And there's some fascinating letters written between uh, F.D. Morris and George MacDonald. In fact, George, a couple of George MacDonald's early novels the preacher is, many people will argue, it's F.D. Morris. And uh, MacDonald is one of his books in the 1860s was dedicated to F.D. Morris. But he wrote Morris and he says, I'm not sure um, you want me to dedicate this to you because of the, the, the abuse you've taken for the positions and it may just hurt you yet further given my increasing reputation uh, in terms of critiquing Calvinism. And so it's important to understand the MacDonald, uh, the MacDonald uh, F.D. Morris connection because they were the two pioneers in 19th century England really uh, in reversing um, uh, centuries long uh, form of Calvinism and Lutheranism and, and reaching their fingers as Virgil would to that further shore for the messages to bring back into time that God in fact is bigger than Calvinism and the Calvinist uh, approach to understanding understanding theology, understanding the life of the church, the understanding where we end when we go behind the beyond, as it were. And so, to see George MacDonald and F.D. Morris uh, hand by hand pioneering a whole new way in the 19th century of doing theology, uh, in which the dominance of Calvinism is increasingly being subordinated and a new way of doing theology is beginning to emerge which a much higher view uh, of God, God's involvement in history, invitational love, um, what does universal salvation mean in all of these things. And so, and so but this, this ran against the current of a dominant low church form of Anglicanism and the dominance of Calvinism. But in that sense, they're tapping into a much older patristic tradition also, and they knew what they were doing in that sense. And so what had happened really since the Reformation in the West is a much older classical view of, 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 of God, God's relationship to what it meant to be, uh, human, the drawing, the wooing, the winning of God, 
God constantly going to the outsider, being with people who felt beat, beat down, alienated. This was not a God who turned their back on people or who chose people and rejected other people. Um, the opportunities of people when they, uh, they leave this life behind, is it over? Well, of course not. The journey goes ever on in that sense. So people like F.D. Morris and George MacDonald, Morris is more theological in how he does it. MacDonald is more literary in the way he does it. Uh, MacDonald gave many sermons. He was a great literary critic. So in one sense, they're, they're companions on the journey using different genres in terms of how they're articulating uh, a richer form of Christianity that very much comes out of classical Christianity and the very best of it in the patristic, uh, patristic era. And probably the main thing they're trying to um, talk against or they're dissenters to or countercultural, it's their, their critique of all forms of Calvinism in that sense. And that's where, again, uh, F.D. Morris, George McDonald, C.S. Lewis have a lot in common. They're coming out of a certain line and lineage, a certain family tree, which is certainly not Calvinist, but as many people, sadly so, and tragically so, um, are forced to do is to face an upbringing, to some degree coming out of an evangelical tradition, which is thoroughly committed to Calvinism, and if you're not Calvinist, therefore, you don't have an adequate understanding of faith, or were she had, as Keller and Piper mentioned, MacDonald probably isn't even a Christian, which is a one sense, it's a pathetic understanding of the Christian faith, and it's it's it, it's really its own legalism. If you don't accept Calvin, you really don't understand your faith. Well, that's just a, a form of theological legalism, which excludes many many people of of amazing faith on uh, on the journey, and it's that Sanhedrin legalism of neo-Calvinism, which is very dangerous, and in one sense, it's the heretical perspective and the distortion of which um, people like Moore, C.S. Lewis, uh, George MacDonald are, are sort of trying to assist people in recovering from what they've been given and how that sort of Calvinism in fact lead a lot of people just to cynicism and despair. And uh, people like Morris, George MacDonald, C.S. Lewis are trying to call people to a much deeper place of the heart's longing and the mind's hunger for a richer view of reality, and so, in that sense, they're countercultural. They're dissenters against a Sanhedrin, which has treated many others uh, in a dismissive way. Other, whether it's a Clark Pinnock or a Tony Campolo, there's many others that come along this path and line that are subjected to this sort of marginalization if they don't line up and goose step behind the institutes in Calvin.